give promises. If those lineage of the people who God gave promises to, they keep those promises, there will be no issue for them. But when they don't keep the promises, then that's a problem. They will start having a problem. You see? They will start having a problem. So now for those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever. After the order of King Melchizedek. That is the oath. God swear that Jesus, this Melchizedek, you are a priest forever. You see? And that's why he brought that blood of sacrifice. He sacrificed that blood that he took to, to the throne to, to the uh, in heaven. Eh? To the throne of grace. That when he ever every time he raised his sword like this to take judgment, he looked at that blood again, he put the sword down. He raised the sword again because of the way what is going on, on this planet earth. It's more corrupt than in the days of, of Sodom and Gomorrah. This world that we live right now is much more corrupt than in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. But every time he lifts that sword, he put it down because he, look, he see the mercy seat. That blood cry for mercy, that of the high priest. Okay? So now, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. You see? Jesus is Melchizedek. You see? And it's a better promise. And there truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. They all died. Okay? And one came after the other. Remember? Aaron, Abimelech, all his children, or Phinehas, whatever, the long list of different people. But this man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Melchizedek, because he continued ever, had an unchangeable priesthood. Jesus is everlasting. Everlasting. And that is where he said that he, he, no mother, no father, no beginning, no end. And I show you again in the, uh, 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 in the book of Micah also, and Genesis. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. You see, again, you can only go to heaven by Jesus. So when we Christians tell you, if Jesus himself said it with his own mouth, I think John 14 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, here, here. So nobody can come to God. It's not about emotion. People should stop this emotion. God, this emotion thing don't go with God. You understand? God just respect people who keep his principle. God is a principle God. Emotion has no place. Okay? It's the truth, light, holiness, and righteousness, and fear of God. That's what has place in the kingdom of God. When we tell people, that Jesus is the only way you can go to heaven. He said also. He said, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. You cannot be saved without coming through Jesus. It does not matter if you take all your salary. You feed all the poor people in this world. You build house for all the widows in this world. You build houses for all the orphans in this world. You go hungry for years so that uh, 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 sick people can eat. You're still not going to enter the kingdom of God. You're not going to enter the kingdom of God. You're just wasting your time. It's not by works. If you come to Christ, then Christ himself will tell you what he wants you to do. That's when you get profit. You cannot by work enter into the kingdom of God. And that's why the laws of Moses, when you break one law, you break the whole laws. And that's why we are saved by grace. You see? He said, wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, by Jesus. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jesus is making intercession for us every second. So when a pastor tells you, because you didn't give him big money, or you are not paying tithes, you are not paying seed, or you didn't give him big money, he's not going to pray for you. Let him not pray for you. Jesus is praying for you. <laughs> the prayer of Jesus 100% before his father. Our prayers could be 50, 60, 
but it's only 100%. I remember when the Lord told me, he said, I was, my son, I'll send people to pray for you. When I go evangelize, I cannot count many people. Even Sunday when I went to evangelize, a sister came to me and said, way before COVID, where I normally evangelize before COVID came, I don't go there, I go to that spot. He said, brother, we've been looking for you. You know, all these years you've been coming here, praying, evangelizing. God put me to be praying for you. And I don't know how many pastors came to me, brother, sister, God told them to be praying for me. You see? So, let nobody threaten you because you didn't give big money to a pastor. He won't pray. Let them not pray. His prayer, that, those kind of people, their prayer might not even go to anywhere. If somebody asks you, some, you are sick, and you say, oh, if you bring $5,000, he will pray for you to receive healing. You never receive healing. Because there's no power there. And you cannot prostitute the gifts of God. You cannot charge money for the gifts of God. If people give you gifts, if you want to take it, that's fine. If you don't want to take it, like me, I don't take things from people. It's fine too. But don't charge people to say you're going to pray for healing, you're going to pray for this. That's not of God. It's prostitution of a gift. And those prayers don't go nowhere. A lot of people are giving their 10,000, 100,000 we had. They never receive healing. So let nobody scare you that they will not pray for you. Jesus is praying for you. And I remind you here again. He said, for such an high priest became us, who is holy. No, let me, yeah. Who is holy, harmless, on the fire. Oh, let me go, go, okay. Okay, 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So he's making intercession for you. You have somebody praying for you every second. Don't let anybody bamboozle you. That's why Apostle Paul said we should not rate ourselves beyond who we are, what we are. A lot of people, some pastors have put themselves, they, are, they, they want to be, Satan say wants to go high up there on the sun and have dominion and rule over the sun and moon. That's pride. That's pride. No man can stop God from blessing you. And no man can make God to bless you. Everything comes from God. A lot of people shaking, coming to me, afraid. Oh, this person wants to. I say, dumb. They curse you. No. When, when, when Balak, the king, told Balaam to curse, what did Balaam told? He said, You cannot curse the people that God has not cursed. When you curse people that God has not cursed, you're cursing yourself. He said you cannot defile people that God has not defiled. It's there in the Bible. It's just that I don't have time to be going there. But if anybody wants, I can send them the, uh, send me, I'll send them the scripture. He said no. So who, those that God has not caused, you can't cause them. Those has God, that God did not defile, you cannot defile them. God said, if you bless Abraham, I will bless you. You cause Abraham, he will cause you. So when people know they are God, and like what the sister was sharing the last time, even that demons are devil knows the power of God. If you know the power of your God, if you know your God, you'll not be moved by anybody, not be afraid of anything. So for such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heaven. You see, that Melchizedek, the high priest, it's not like the priest that we have or pastors. You hear? He said, one, is holy. Holy. Two, harmless. Three, undefiled. Four, separate from sinners. And made higher even than in the heavens. This high priest is made higher. Which priest or pastor on this planet Earth is higher than the heaven? None. Not in the Old Testament. Not now. None. Only one Melchizedek, high priest, Jesus Christ. Okay? Who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice for his own sins and then for the people. You see, those days, those priests have to offer sacrifice before they go to the holies of the holy once a year. In the holies of the holies, that you have the Ark of the Covenant. 
and you have those two cherubim, and on top, on top is the is, is the is the law of Moses, where God used to come, and encounter with them and speak and communicate with them. So before they go to the holies of the holies, they have to wash their own sin first, make sacrifice for their own sin, then make sacrifice for for, for the people. Okay, but you hear he say this Melchizedek he does not do those things. He does not make sacrifice for his own sin and then make sacrifice for the people that then go hear what he said. He said, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the peoples. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Jesus offered himself that high priest, Jesus, that office of the priest. He offered himself once as a sacrifice with his blood and took upon all the sins of men, okay? And that's it, once and for all. And he was resurrected. And he's alive forever and evermore. That's why I say in the book of Revelation 1, he said, I was dead, but I am alive. And I live there forevermore, amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. The keys of hell and of death is in the hand of Jesus Christ. And also have the book of life in his hand. So that is the high priest of Melchizedek, uh, the office of the, of the high priest. So now, finally, for the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the son who is consecrated forever, wholly consecrated forever. Hallelujah. So that is Melchizedek, Jesus Christ. So now if we run quickly to the book of Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1 to... To, to 10 so I can finish up. We still have time, but I just uh, one from verse uh, 1 because we didn't start exactly at uh, uh, 8.30. Uh, okay. From uh, Hebrew 5, from verse 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way for that he, he himself also is encompassed with infirmity. Pastors, they deal with sins. I don't care what your title is. They have so many titles that it's not in the Bible today. You deal with infirmity. And that's why when Jesus teaches us that prayer, as he's always, our Father which art in heaven, I will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Okay? That prayer. That we have to pray that keep us out of temptations and deliver us from evil. For thou is for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. They face infirmity, they face temptation. Let a pastor come out who says he doesn't face temptation. He lied to you. And that's what the Bible is saying here. Infirmity, all kind of issues. But this perfect priest, high priest, don't have that issue. <laughs> they, don't, they, they don't okay and that's why he say we should continue in his word if you continue in his word it will keep you out of sin okay who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity and by reason hereof he ought as for the people so also for himself to offer for sins and no man taketh this honor unto himself but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. You see, that Jesus Christ is Melchizedek and is the high priest. You see, again, okay. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Okay. And he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay? Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him, that was able to save him from death and was hard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet lent he obedience by the things which he suffered. And be made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation 
unto all them that obey him. When I tell people that your pastor can't save you, your pastor is not, I can't save myself. I cannot save my family. Only Jesus can. People don't know the thing is their pastor, their church, where they go on Sunday, that's where they will go to heaven. There's no salvation there. Salvation is in Jesus. We go to church to fellowship with people. That's a body. Your pastor can't take you to heaven. Some pastors will not make it to heaven. There are pastors who have died right now who have went straight to hell. Also some Christians who died straight to hell. So if you want to go to heaven, look unto Jesus, the author of your salvation. Okay? Anyone who wants, who may, want, look at Jesus. It's good to fellowship together. Like Sunday after we finish evangelizing, I finish up with fellowship, we talk, that's beautiful. But the one that is going to take us to heaven is Jesus Christ. A lot of people, instead of them focusing on Jesus, my pastor, my pastor, my pastor, my pastor, my pastor, my pastor. I remember when I was working my heart many years ago when I was health coordinator. Every time this woman said, oh, I'll call my pastor, I'll call my pastor. I'll call. She has never ever mentioned Jesus one time. Let her go in a room and, 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 and pray to Jesus. All is, she thought, pastor, pastor, because that's, they've brainwashed them. When you see Christians, those are those that have been brainwashed in churches. You talk about your pastor a hundred times. You haven't mentioned Jesus one time. It's, it's a shame. It's a shame. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, now if we go to the book of uh, Hebrew, chapter 1, 6 to 14. I read quickly then. We almost come to an, a close. So if you go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, from verse 6, again. And again, he bringeth in the first begotten into the world. He said, and let all the angels of God worship him. So when people say, other religion tell you that Jesus is the same thing like their prophets, all these false prophets in all this religion. That the only difference between Jesus and them is that Jesus... Uh, fed the poor or do some miracle. Who was born on, on planet Earth from the beginning of creation that God instructs his angels to worship? You hear? And let all the angels of God worship him. If you know any man from the beginning of Abra Adam the first, and his wife Eve, the first creation up to today, that God said all his angels, we talk of angels of God. Who are worshiping day and night every second. Holy, holy, holy. And God instructed them to worship him. It's only Jesus. You see? And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he said, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But unto the Son, that's Melchizedek, Jesus Christ. He said, Thy throne, O God. God the Father is telling Jesus Christ, King Melchizedek, that thy throne, O God. That's why we told you God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is one God. It depends on what role they are playing at that particular time. Okay? But unto the Son he said, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness. Remember when I talk about this, scepter shall never depart from Judah. When we're talking in the book of Genesis, right? Genesis 49, 10, right? Okay. Thy scepter is the scepter of righteousness. Is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. When Jesus was on planet Earth, even as a man, there was no sin found in him. No single sin. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Thou Lord, you see God the Father again, is calling God the Son, Jesus Christ. Thou Lord, in the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as dot a garment. And as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, Thy years shall not fail. Remember when we were in the book of Hebrew? He said, This Melchizedek, 
Hebrew, uh, Hebrew chapter, uh, when we started chapter 7, he said he has no kingdom. He has no beginning. He has no father. He has no mother. <laughs> He's old. Even the book of Micah is of old. Even Genesis. All right? So he said, thou art the same. Thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits? Send forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So my brothers and sisters, so if we go to John chapter 8, John chapter 8, I think we'll finish, we'll finish with John. The book of John chapter 8, hallelujah. Blessed be God forever and evermore. Melchizedek is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. John chapter 8 from verse 33. I read quickly. They answer him. These are the Jewish people. They answer him, we be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. How seest thou ye shall be made free? When Jesus said we we'll make them free, they say, no, we are not in bondage. We are children of Abraham. And Jesus said, no, you need to be made free. You are bound there with sin. You need to be made free. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. He told them in their face. He said, Whoever committed sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided forever. If, thou, if the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. He told them, I know, yes, you are Abraham's seed. You are descendants of Abraham. But ye seek to kill me because my word had no place in you. Like the way they attack Christians today when they preach the gospel. Because the word of God has no place in them. You see? The place devil has taken it. And the devil in them, the demons in them, make them react to want to kill somebody who tell them the truth. Because the truth pierces the heart. And the truth sometimes can be painful, but it sets people free. That is the goodness of the truth. It sets, it always sets free. If people will accept it. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And yet do that which you have seen with your father. Who is his father? God the father. Who is their father? The devil. Okay? They answer him and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus, they thought he was talking about Abraham. Because Abraham didn't behave like that. When he said, what you have seen, what you have seen with your father. They thought he was talking about Abraham. He was telling them about Abraham. He said, no, you have, he's talking about devil. Because Abraham didn't behave like you people. This is the same Jesus that break Melchizedek. That's why I say, take note. In the book of Genesis, when he paid the tithe, the one tenth, okay? He came from the war, right? And Melchizedek break a bread. Okay, this is that Jesus. That's the Melchizedek who break bread in the book of Genesis with Abraham. Why? Because Abraham had that promise. And what did he do after he broke bread? He blessed Abraham. Okay, I speak that which I have seen with my father, God the Father, and yea, that which ye have seen with your father, Satan the devil. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye will do the works of Abraham. Abraham walks, walked before God. Abraham worshipped God. Abraham loved God. Abraham had relationship with God. Abraham hear from God. Abraham is a man of God. He's a prophet of God. He has relationship with God. Intimacy. Not through a pastor, a pope, or thing. direct like Moses. Abraham knows God, have relationship with God. That's why when God was going to destroy Adam, and, uh, Sodom, and Gomorrah, he said, "Can I hide anything from my friend Abraham? Because I know Abraham will teach his children the ways of God." And he went and spoke to Abraham. That's when Abraham started bargaining with him. Oh, if you have 50, if you have 40, if you have 30, if you have 20, then you stop at 10. Abraham did the work of God. And that's why Jesus said, he said, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But you are of the devil and you do the works of the devil. You see? But now you seek to kill me. A man that had told you the truth. 
And that's why the world does not want to hear the truth. That's why they attack people who speak the truth. Even our churches, the pastors who are of God, who preach the truth of God, who don't talk about money and deceive people, collecting tithes, collecting offering, collecting sin, they hate them. Those that are appointing men to eternal life, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear about prosperity. They hate them. Okay? Because the truth is, does, if you accept truth, it sets you free. Either the truth will set you free or will break you. In the breaking is when you don't believe it and you get upset. You even want to kill the person. In setting free is when you accept it. Okay? But now ye seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I heard of God. This did not Abraham. He said Abraham did not behave the way you behave. Abraham listened to God. He believed in God. He walked with God. He served God. He loved God. He had intimacy with God. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye will love me. For I proceeded forth. And came from God. That I came I of myself. But he sent me. This is a game. Any religion. Any person from any religion. Who say oh, he believes in God. But he doesn't believe in Jesus. He believes in God. But this Jesus thing is not true. It's a lie. It is because. They have no spirit of God in them. You cannot separate the, the father. And the son. You cannot say you love the son. And you hate the father. You can't say you love the father and hate the son. It's not possible. It's not possible. If you say you love the father and you hate the son, you're a liar. That's why all those people, there's a place. Why do they, Bible talk about liars. It's everyone that reject Jesus. You say you know God, but you reject Jesus, you're a liar. You can't separate them. There's one God. So everyone that say, oh, we believe in God, but we don't believe in this Jesus, you're a liar. You don't have the truth in you. You don't have the truth in you. So now, where does this stop? 47. Okay, let me read. Why do you not understand my speech even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye of your father, the devil, and the loss of your father, ye we do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinced, convinced me of sin? You see? And if I saw, if I said the truth, why do not ye believe me? He that is of God, heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. When they deny Jesus, because they are not of God. <laughs> That's why they deny Jesus. Those religions, oh, oh yeah, God, God, we don't believe in this Jesus, this, all these stories. Because they are not of God. They are liars. Finally, my brothers and sisters, so if we go to, we go to, uh, let's see, uh, John 8, okay, 37, let me see what is left. We'll go to a close. Okay, 55 to 59, read quickly. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. So let me even go to a start from 54. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that is your God. Yet ye have not known him. That same God you say is your God, like those religion who say they know God and deny Jesus. You say, yeah, ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar. Jesus said, if he doesn't, if he say he doesn't know God, the Father is a liar. He himself will be a liar, like unto you. He said, if I say I don't know God the Father, I will be a liar like you people also. But I know him, you see. But I know him. And, he, I, and, and keep his saying, okay. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. You hear? Jesus is telling them, your father Abraham. You see, now go back to Genesis. And they make his head breaking bread. And blessing Abraham. You hear what he said? He said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw the day. He was so happy that time when he met Mekisede. They broke bread and Mekisede uh, blessed him. You see? He said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old. 
They told Jesus he was like 30 something there or 30 or something. They say you are not even 50 years old. How dear can you say you know Abraham? Hear what Jesus told them. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. It's not even I was, past tense. I am, because it's no beginning, no end. Okay, my brothers and sisters. So the same Abraham that break bread in Genesis, he met Jesus. He, he met Jesus. And that's why God said, even when Jesus told him, when Abraham met me, he was so happy. He rejoiced. Yeah, They say you are not even 50 years old. Which is true, it was maybe 20 something, 30 years old. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham, your father, I will, I am. You see? That is Melchizedek. It comes in conclusion, finally tonight, Jesus Christ, God the Son, Son of God, the Messiah, Emmanuel. King of kings, Lord of lords. The Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of this world. The Lion of Judah. He is Melchizedek. Father, we just thank you tonight. We give you all the praises and glory and honor. Thank you, Lord God, for this understanding. I pray, Lord Father God, as people listen, that we give them more understanding on this topic. Let your name be glorified, O oh God. That all those that have doubts about Melchizedek, when they listen to this, they will be 100% sure who Melchizedek is. We thank you for your word, O oh God. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Any questions about this topic?